Good afternoon and welcome to MAE 113 Calculus for the Liberal Arts. My name is Richard Kohar and this is Lecture 25. The ex exponential function is what we're going to be covering today. And let's see, the 18th of March 2021. And of course there's uh, a test. Our test is next. Good day. Hello. Um, make sure that you can say, uh, again, in the chat, make sure that you can hear my voice okay, that the audio is good. So we have a test next Thursday. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you. So we have a test next Thursday. Um, it'll follow the same format that we did previously. It'll be conducted over Zoom and we'll have paper and you'll scan them and then you'll submit the PDF and then I'll try to mark them quickly um, and return them to you. So we have a test next Thursday. Um, there's an assignment posted. And what else do we have? Oh yeah, so there's an assignment. Um, and then there's there's no quiz though next week. So instead of uh, the quiz that we usually have on Tuesday, we're gonna have the test on Thursday. So um, you don't have to worry about that. You have to worry about the test. Cool. All right. So we, at the beginning of this course, we had reviewed the exponent laws. We had seen laws like, well, we had like x squared times x cubed equals, and this is, if I have, um, I'm multiplying these together, that the exponents I'm adding together. So it's 2 plus 3, and that equals 5. And, you know, if I had x squared over x cubed, this would be 2 minus 3 for the division. And so I got x equals, sorry, it equals x minus 1. Or I could also rewrite that as 1 over x. So, again, if you forgot these exponential rules or the exponent laws again you can always go back in a previous lecture now we also did differentiation when we looked at what we called power functions so if I had a function and we use like x to the n and this is the x so the x is the base and that was what we had as the variable because that's what we have said it was in our function declaration here so the function is of x so I put in a value in there and this is where I put that value and right up here, this n, n is the exponent. And uh, I'm going to say, you know, it's either a constant or I'm going to say it's fixed, meaning that it's not changing. But there's a different um, function we could consider as if we swap places. So instead of having a fixed variable in the exponent, we could actually have a variable in the exponent. So before we go through, we did the, um, these are called power functions. And that's what led us to our power rule when we were using differentiation. But we can also consider say 
a function like this. So instead, I'm going to put the x in the variable. I'm um, sorry, I'm going to put the x, which is our variable, in the exponent. And then I'll have some fixed value in the base. I'll use b for base. So up here, x is the exponent. meaning that it's the variable. And down here, this is the base. Now just a show in the chat of how many people have seen exponential functions before. Are there lots of people who've seen it before or in high school excellent yes because they also do come up uh, well we've been they come up naturally uh, we see it in well, actually, we've been seeing a lot lately. But, uh, okay, so what we call this type of function is what we call an exponential function. And, of course, we've been hearing that term exponential a lot lately in the news because we're in 2021 and we've living with COVID now for a year and we keep hearing about exponential growth. We were always afraid that uh, it's going to grow exponentially. Um, so again, this naturally rises. In applications. So again, we were worried about the spread of a virus going exponential, but we'll first look at just a little um, example. And this is the example that they give in the textbook. Again, our textbook is the links in the description. So again, <laughs> I have, but forgot it completely. Uh, well, I'm sure you've heard it now uttered many times now in the news, but it's always good that we're going to refresh. What does it actually mean? I mean, I will definitely go and routinely look up words in the dictionary just to make sure. Also, if you want to keep the pulse, like if you, if you're like me and you like don't have a lot of social media and you don't really know what's going on in the world, all you have to really do is go to the Oxford English Dictionary website and you can see what words are trending because those are the words that people are looking up because they don't know what that means. So um, I'm pretty sure at some point like exponential was one of those trending words. I feel like it at least. So. It's also the same with Twitter. It's kind of like looking at those tags when you see Twitter. <clears throat> massive, uh, we have, we're going to look at a massive a back, bacterial colony, and we're going to say that it doubles, it doubles every hour. Okay, and then the question is, is by what factor? Does it grow? After. And so let's go for A. We're going to say five hours. Well, if it doubles every hour, that means that, you know, it's going to double in the first hour, in the second hour, in the third hour, the fourth hour, and the fifth hour. And we're done. So that's two. How many times is that? One, two. Yeah, it should be five. So five times. 
So we can write that as 2 to the fifth. So 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2 is 8, times, six, uh, times 2 is 16, and times 2 again gives me 32. Uh, we could also maybe say if it's 6 hours. And that would be 2 to the 6. Uh, so I'll just double that again from going from 5 to 6. It gives me 64. And if you're worried about, uh, um, we're just doubling it. So these are our common numbers that we usually use for memory. So you can have 2 gigs, 4 gigs, 8 gigs, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, goes on. Um, let's say 20 minutes. Okay, so this is not an integer uh, value because I have, I was usually using like doubling every hour. Um, this is less than an hour. So 20 minutes, well that's one third of an hour. Hopefully most people remember a clock. It's that thing we used to have on the wall when we were at school. And at 20 minutes, it's about here. So it's a third. All right. So what do we do here? Well, it's the same idea. What we had here is we had basically, we were doing like two to the X. And so when we had X as our number of hours, then we had two to the fifth which gave us 32 and two to the sixth gave us 64. So in this case, if I wanted to do, you know, a third of an hour or 20 minutes, then it's, two to the one-third and we can actually express that as the cube root of two and I don't remember the cube root of two so I will pull out my calculator so I would want um, three, so I wanted the, the inverse of three. And then I'm going to take two and I'm going to do the power of it. Nope. So I'll do my two first and then I'll do my, or my three. Two to the, should give me one point. There we go. So that means that it'll grow in 20 minutes by a factor of 1.2599. So roughly 1.26. And, you know, you can keep going on, you know, what is X hours? Well, I kind of let that, let, let that slip already you know, it would be to the x factor. So bacteria, there's a doubling rate or now, of course, that is a very um, idealized situation. Again, when we're growing bacteria in a Petri dish, it runs out of uh, agar or nutrients. It runs out of space. So there is no upper bound. Uh, there is an upper bound for how much it can grow. Uh, then you can have the colony collapse. But um, again, that's an idealized situation. So 
So the, I, the next thing that we could do is, what would that graph look like? So I could tell that it's going to be keeping. It's going to keep growing. It's. Uh, we would like it to be continuous. Um, but instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the computer. And this is what it's perfect for. I'm going to use. I'm going to have my x values, and I'm going to do two to the x. Oops, two to the x. And the little uh, chevron or carrot top denotes that's. Uh, going that x is the exponent and I'm going to use some uh, like well, let's do minus 2 and uh, minus 0 0.75 and 0.5 so I'm going to go like in half stops or half there we go maybe I'll go up to 3 and I'll take this and I will do that. And I guess I could plot it. So let's go to the chart. And I don't, I'm going to use a, so there's my scatter plot. And then there's a line type. I'm not going to use straight. I'm going to use smooth. And that is my graph. So that's two to the x. So um, I we've done it for kind of points, like individual points, and we would like it to be continuous. Um, the other thing to note is that the y-intercept is at 0, 1. So that is something that we'll make a note of. So let's just jump back to the paper. So just to give you a quick sketch, it's a graph like this. So if you had to draw what 2 to the x looks like, just something like this. Here it goes. And I tried to cross that one there, but... Uh, And this is where x is the reals. So we can see from that, for this one, we have a domain. What do you guys think is the domain here? What? It's okay. I missed my y. <laughs> yeah. I'll I'll kind of draw it like that. There we go. So what is the domain for this function? Just looking at that. Greater or equal to zero, the domain. The domain, again, is what the value of x is going to be. And I th I had written it out already. I had, yeah, dumb me, I should have not have put it down already. But the domain is, I can put in any value of x into here, and it will generate me a number. So, however, Mr. M yes, exactly, Mr. Maple. Mr. May, I think um, you were thinking of the range. So the range is what the values of y could be. And in this case, I'm going to tell you that it's from 0 to infinity. Now, this is a continuous increasing function over the reals. Okay. So what's the next thing that we could do is I'm going to draw a graph, another one.
Oh, yes. And oh, yeah, we were going to also say that the y intercept is 0, 1. And the reason for that is because when we want to do the y intercept, that's when x equals 0, which then means that 2 to the 0, so anything, anything 2 to the 0, or 3 to the 0, or b to the 0, is always going to equal 1. Now, what we can we do? We can do another example here. So this one would be like draw the graphs of 3 to the x. And the other one we're going to do is 1 third of x. Okay, so let's jump back and so in this one, we're going to use 3 to the x, oops, and on this side, we're going to use 1 third x, and we will uh, just modify our calculations here, so we'll use 3. Oh yeah, and the graph also, that's the nice thing, is when, when you've plotted it, it'll update it up as well. So again, uh, 0 and 1, sorry, when x equals 0, it's still 1, so that's good. And on the uh, A2, we'll do 9. Actually, I'm going to stop it there. I'm going to just delete these. So the interesting part already when we're looking at this table of values is you can see that you know from 3 it's it's always increasing. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. When I do 1 third it's now decreasing and what you'll see is these values have flipped. So if I had negative 2 for 3x if I had it for positive 2 and the 1 third, then that's the same value. So, just a second, what I'll do, I'll delete that. I can recreate the graph again, insert my chart using not a bar graph. Uh, then we go smooth lines again. Doo -doo -doo. Perfect. So then my question is, first of all, I should ask, which one, okay, yeah, it says column B and column C. I was going to say like, oh, which, which, <laughs> which one does this correspond to? So column B here, which is this blue curve here, that's 3 to the x. And for one third x, this is the blue curve, or sorry, this is the red curve down here. And what you'll see is that along the, the x equals zero line, or the y axis, that the three x is reflected. So, uh, then the other thing to kind of note too is uh, at 1 and 3, so we'll do that. So I'll make some, I'll just kind of note, as I, I should just switch over to the paper. Oops, there we go. So I have x, and then I'll use 3 to the x and 1 third to the x. So we, of course, know that. At 0, these will be 1 and 1. I'll use um, 1 gives me 3. And the other one I'll use is also uh, 2. So that will give me 9. And then for the 1 third, 
So that will give me one third here. And in the two, that should give me one over nine. And then if I picked, you know, negative one and negative two, then in the one third one, that should give me three and nine. And over on this side, this should give me one over three and one over nine. So we'll see how well I can uh, sketch this. So that's my line of symmetry that I'll have to make sure that it kind of reflects in. There's X and Y. Two. This is my zero. One, two, four, five, six. Oop, that's going to be quite tall, anyways. So for this. 3x1, it'll go through here. It should go through 3 and then like go really up high. So there we go. So there's my 3 to the x. And similarly, I'll have the same idea for the 1 third. So just reflecting it. There. So again, uh, I'll make a little note. So again, note. You know, all of those had passed through. They passed through the point zero comma one. And it will always go because B to the zero equals one for B not equal to zero. Okay. So just jumping back to my spreadsheet here, uh, we had done that, but I had done something a little bit earlier. So I had done something like two, two to the x, three to the x, five to the x. I have one fifth, one third, a half. And again, the nice thing is I can just select all these points and it will graph it for me, just so that I can show you the basic shape. And again, I don't want bar graph. <laughs> Smooth. There we go. So again, it doesn't label it. I wish it did label it a little nicer for me. But column, uh, let's look at there's E. So column E, which is my green. So this would be to the X here. This one, this one that's a little bit bigger, that's three to the X. Up here, that's five to the X. So again, if you were if you were given something like a graph, um, for example, on exam, you would get you know some lines like this, and you could say like what's two to the x, three to the x, or five to the x. You would say oh, this one's smaller because again, two to the x would be smaller than three to the x, and three to the x would be smaller than five to the x. And we can also then flip it on the other side, that. Uh, on this one, this one's the tallest, so I would say that that would be one fifth to the x. And on this side, this would be one to the third, or sorry, one third to the x. And this one would be a half to the x. But the thing to notice as well, again, to illustrate this, is they all will go through that point, 0, 1.
Oops. So this is the third page. So um, you kind of see the two cases already. So we have the case one. This is where B is greater than one. So in that case, you'll have something like that. It's increasing, it's continuous. So again, it's going through one go and the other thing to note is that there is a horizontal asymptote we can see well there we don't really see it being horizontal asymptotic as it's going to positive infinity but as it's going to minus infinity it is getting smaller and smaller and it's approaching zero so if b is greater than 1, then the limit as x goes to minus infinity of this function b to the x equals 0. And the limit as x goes to infinity of b to the x, well, as x gets really big, those numbers get really big really fast. So that is, you can say it's undefined or it doesn't exist, but we'll write that kind of mathematical shorthand saying that it's going off to infinity. So it's unbounded. And this is, we'll say also note for the graphical aspect that this is a horizontal asymptote. So that's at y equals 0, or that's the x-axis. Okay, and then the second case is if we got those fractions. So if the base is a fraction, or I mean, you know, it's between 0 and 1. So same idea, but we had seen that with the other graphs that if it's a frac like it's a fraction or you know it's one over something, it's between zero and one, that it's flipped. So it'll grow really, really big and it's decreasing. So in this case it's a decreasing function. It's a decreasing continuous function. So again. Uh, as I tried to, well, I'll start up here. There. Okay, so up here, that's my b equals x. Here's my b equals x as well. It's going to that point, zero, one. So, in this case, I have if 0 is less than, oh sorry, if b is between 0 and 1, then the limit as x goes to minus infinity, so that one is going, this one is getting really, really big as x is getting really small, so that one is unbounded. And this one is where I let the x goes to positive infinity. 
and that limit of b to the x is equal to, and it's getting really, really close to zero. So, and in that case, so if you have a function um, that's an exponential function, you are always going to have the horizontal asymptote. Okay, number four. Okay, so this one is an, another example. And what this one says is using y equals 2 to the x, sketch I have y equals 3 plus 2 to the x. And in this one, I have b, which is y equals minus 2 to the x. So don't freak out about that minus 2, because you're like, oh no, we, we don't have anything. And you're like, you just showed us, you, we, you have the two cases. Like, yeah, b is greater than 1, and that's gross. And then you had like, this one, which was between 0 and 1, you didn't give us any, just, just don't worry. We can handle this. We can handle it using a, what's, we can use a transformation, okay? And this is uh, a trans transformations that you probably would have seen in high school or something that um, may have been covered in 103, but I will still kind of talk through this. So the idea is using this as our base function to work with. And by base, I mean like we're going to use this and we're going to apply some transformation or we're going to kind of adapt it so that we fit it or we match to what we want. So if I have, here's my curve. I'm drawing my axes first. The nice thing, probably on a test, you would get nice, you would get to, oh, well, if you don't have a printer, then you won't have it. So you'll have to draw this out by hand then. So you'll probably need a ruler um, or an exam. So again, I'll draw my sketch. Here's my 2 to the x. There we go. 2 to the x. Hopefully that uh, kind of... There we go. So here... One, two, three, four. Okay, so to do that transformation, what this says is you take two to the x and we're going to add three. So that means and shift up three units. And that's okay. Like the that just means everything. All of the properties that we had previously move with it. So it'll move up by three. So if I had my domain here, so again, this is for my y equals two to the x, the domain uh, is all the real, so that's fine. The, well, we already know that there's a horizontal asymptote, so it's going to be 
bounded from below. So we have the range is from 0, doesn't include 0, up to infinity. Um, and we also have the horizontal asymptote. So again, just summarizing what we already know. So it's uh, y equals 0. And what's the other one? We know that the y-intercept, that's at 0, 1. So that's those are my properties. And I'll just kind of, on this side here, I'll write my 3 plus 2x. So again, we're going to just take that and shove it up 3 units. Okay. So I'm going to start with the horizontal asymptote. It's going to move up three units. So we're going to go from zero up to three. So one, two, here's three. So my y equals three here. And OK, so I'll write that right here. So here's my horizontal. Now you don't have to, I'm not, you don't have to write all this out here. If you just did your sketch and you just shifted up by three units, that's fine. Perfect. What I'm just doing is showing you that the properties of that function, it also applies to this as well. So that's my horizontal asymptote. My y intercept also moves up by three units. So it goes from, from one here. So one, two, three up three units so that goes up to 0 comma 4 so that is my new y-intercept the range and the domain okay so the domain there's no restriction so again so it's just from negative to infinity negative infinity to infinity and the range also moves up with it so we have had zero, it's going to move up by three, so it's now from three to infinity. And so I'm just going to kind of try to copy this curve, but up three units. So I got, here it is, going up there, and then like, whoo, up like that. So three plus two to the x. That looks good. Yeah, so it's, you know, that's it. That's all you had to do was that kind of just take this, move it up by three, and all the properties kind of move with it. So the asymptote moves up the y-intercept moves up and let's see what's the next one that we had we had b equals y equals minus x uh, minus 2 to the x Oh, and the, the other thing I'll make a note, I'll use kind of my green pen here just to make a little note. Y equals 3 is the horizontal asymptote. And again, you can see that if I took the limit as x goes to minus infinity, of 3 plus 2 to the x. Well, again, I can apply that limit to each individual one. And again, I can do that. Remember our rules. 
provided that these limits exist. So again, I can do that. So these, these exist. The reason for that is because as the limit as x goes to minus infinity of 3, well, that's a constant, so that's still 3 plus. I have the limit as x goes to minus infinity of 2 to the x. But we've already, we already know for this case where it's b is greater than 1 that it's we've already defined it that the limit as x goes to minus infinity of b to the x is equal to 0. So that means that this one here also must be 0. So that equals 3. So that, again, we can show it algebraically that the horizontal asymptote for 3 plus 2 to the x is indeed y equals 3. Okay, so the one that people could be freaking out because I haven't shown anything yet about how to handle it. We've Because we, again, we've always dealt with b or the base which was greater than 0. Um, okay, so again, using 2 to the x, so here's my y-intercept, 2 to the x, Now I'll pull up my trusty calculator. I'll use a negative value here. And again, negative two to the zero should give me one, right? Excellent. Hmm. Well, what we should do maybe switch over to the screen here. Oh, I have three minutes. Am I going to be able to do this in three minutes? That's... I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. To the minus two. There we go. And so in this one, I'll just change it to minus two. Okay. Ah, see, we don't have it defined. But if I do this, Still doesn't do it. What a very odd looking function. Let's see if we can get it to work. Okay. So some button could say like, what happens if I have it with a negative exponent? So same idea again. Let's just have a look at that. Very interesting. So I'm just going to switch back to this. The question then becomes, is 
y equals minus 2 to the x possible to graph. And we'll have to find that out next time. We've hit the end of our mark. If there's, again, any questions about that, about this, maybe send me an email if you think that you have an answer for that. But uh, this just covered kind of the basic structure of the exponential function, that we saw that it naturally arises from where things are doubling. So a colony of bacteria is doubling every hour, and it, then that's exponential growth. You could apply that also from the for for ex, uh, for viruses. Uh, we saw that if I have three to the x and I take one third to the x, that to to graph this I just flip it or my I have an axis of symmetry here at y equals zero. Um, if b is greater than zero, it is positive. It is uh, increasing and it is continuous. If b is between 0 and 1, it is positive. It is decreasing and it's continuous. And we also saw then how to use information that we already had, like if we had the function 2 to the x and we wanted to do a 3 plus 2 to the x, then we're just shifting it up. Um, and we saw that the rest of those properties shift as well. If there's any more questions, again, feel free to send me an email. Check out the assignment, and I will see you on Monday. Have a great weekend, everyone.